So I've been doing Euro Rack for about, uh, I guess, three years now. And I've got to say that I haven't got a huge amount of sort of sound generation stuff. I've only got these sort of oscillators and this beehive plats here. Um, but I keep coming back to this Elements, okay, which is a mutable clone. And I think, from my, in my opinion, the combination of that and cloud is just you can get some really nice stuff, uh, nice sounds coming out of that. So yeah, I've really enjoyed working with these. So I thought I'd do a quick explainer video on how each one works. Um, I've done a video already on the clouds one. You can find that on my channel. Um, but for this, um, it's, it can be hard to get your head around. And I was a bit confused about it before I watched, um, I think Div Kid video was one of the ones I looked at, which made the penny drop. So basically, Elements are split into two sections. You've got the initiation or the excitation side and then the resonance side. Okay, so in short, if you think about standing in front of a cave and shouting, um, this is the shouting part and that's the echo part that you get from sort of shouting into a big hole or a cave. Okay, and the excitation part is really split into three um, areas. So you've got a, blo a bowing excitation, a blowing and a striking excitation there, okay? And um, what I'll do, I'll turn up the bowing, and I've got on the key step, I've got a, just a simple two pulses coming out of there, just to give you an idea. So on the bowing side, you can just hear that. It's quite quiet, actually, this one in comparison. And some people think there's a problem with this side, but it's not. It's just the way that this is set up with the contour button here. So this, if you imagine it's like, if you've ever played a violin, um, sometimes it takes a while for that string to start to resonate um, with the bow and, and to produce a sound. So it can be quite fiddly, I know, because I've tried it myself a few times. But that's really this knob. This is kind of the, su the success of the bowing knob, if you like. But also it introduces some harmonics. It can introduce some harmonics as well to that sound. So that's bowing. And these really are, are just sort of amplitude control knobs, if you like. And then the other white knob that goes with that is almost like a filter for that input. So it's like, gives you a timbre, timbre. Uh, so if I turn that up, there you can see the frequency changing, or hear it as I change that around, okay? So that's bowing. I'll turn that one down and we'll move over to blowing. <coughs> So again, you've got a timbre um, knob for that, which is really like a filter. So you can see that changes the frequency components in that sound. And then, but with this, you've also got a flow as well. Okay, so this is the flow. So imagine if you're blowing into a whistle, um, you can blow hard or soft. That's really this. Okay, so that's blow. <clears throat> and then the striking, So again, you've got timbre. And this knob is almost like, if you imagine you have a hammer and you can change the material on that hammer to sort of, I don't know, something hard like steel or brass, but then you can put some rubber over it or some cloth. That's really what this is. And also it's got repeated striking as well. So it's almost like different material hammers you're using, but there's some re repetition in there as well. So maybe hammers with sort of multiple heads or multiple strikes. So that's really then the excitation side and all these inputs, um, you can use LFOs to modulate and sort of change the influence of those there. So moving on to the, um, the resonance side, what I'll do, I'll just bring up I'll leave the strike, I think, because that's quite a nice sound. So, <clears throat> so you've got uh, coarse tuning, fine tuning, and FM. So I've got a 3340 oscillator just giving me a sawtooth into the FM input. And if I change this, it does influence that sound, but I think I'll make the envelope longer with this. So that's the duration of the note, okay, or the decay of the note. The 
if I bring the FM effect back in. Yeah, so that oscillator is having an effect now. Quite nice. Okay, so that's the FM. And then you've got um, some other kind of FM effect here. I think that's all about which frequencies resonate um, within that sound. And you've got another timbre of that. So if imagine again, if you're shouting down a cave, it depends what the walls are made of. If the walls are soft, you might get a lot of those high frequencies being absorbed. Whereas if the walls are hard or if it's a steel tube, you might get more of a metallic or a high frequency reflection from that sound. So that's that. And then you've got some other options here. So yeah, that's um, the length of the note or the decay. <clears throat> Another timbre knob, or resonance, I think that's resonance, yeah. And then a nice bit of reverb, which, um, yeah, it's just lovely. When you, when you get into this and start making your own sounds and you can sort of modulate all these as well using the LFOs, when you start getting into that, the sounds are really nice. You can get some really nice stuff. And you can mix these as well. So I've got another um, track on here, which is more tuneful. <clears throat> so I'll let that run and then I'll start to introduce the clouds. So I'll start, so clouds are sampling all the time on a sort of a linear um, sampler and then you can play back a section of that and choose the position of that playback and the size of it. So I'll just start triggering that. And you've got your own reverb as well on clouds. agree just those two modules together can you know, make some really really nice sounds <clears throat> 